Hey guys, Civilian Soldier 762 here. And today I just wanted to do a quick video on a couple things. The first thing is the muzzle brake that comes on these uh, SGL series rifles. This here is the SGL 21, and it comes with a 24 millimeter threads, like what would be standard on a AK-74, even though this is 762. <coughs> these let me see if I can see, show you here. These Arsenal muzzle brakes are really, really nice. Uh, I just kind of wanted to go over the difference between one of these and say like your twenty dollar seventy four style brake you can get from like Tapco or something that you see a lot of people have on the fourteen millimeter threaded barrels like the Wassers or you know, AKs like that. <clears throat> Not that the Tapcos are bad, because, you know, for Tapco, what they make, price to what you get, you get, a, you get a good product for the price you pay. You know, is there better? Yeah, there is. And this is what, what it is. Uh, these are pretty fair priced. I think at one point they were close to $100. Now I think they're probably around 60 or so. And uh, the only thing that disappoints me is they're not chrome lined. I don't think. Yeah, they're not. They're not chrome lined, but that's really not that big a deal. The way, the reason these brakes are so good and help so much with uh, recoil compensation is several things. First, is the 24 millimeter threads allow it to have this big chamber in here, and if you can see the light through at the end of the brake right there, where my finger is. There's what or the half moon cuts people call them on each side, and the you know the 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 muzzle pressure or whatever goes out of there, and then also through the front, and you also have the proper ports drilled in it. With some of the cheaper ones like the Tapco, which I don't have here to show you, but they the ports that are drilled in it aren't in the proper place like that. I think it's like two in a line on top and uh, also I don't believe that they have the different size like that on one and that on the other. I think it's two like that. But I mean I know several people who use the Tapco brakes and they say they do help a lot so it's not that it's a bad brake. It's just this is an excellent brake. So I just kind of wanted to show some people this, and if uh, you do have a 14 millimeter rifle, but wanted to, to use one of these brakes, you still can. You you uh, can get from like CNC Warrior. I think Kreb sells one. They are a thread converter that let the screws onto your 14 by one left hand. That will change the threads to a 24 millimeter, and then you can use this brake, and you'll have that thread pattern. The only thing is, you won't have your detent pin, obviously, on the on the rifle with the 14 by one left hand threads, because it would be down there. But I know they make one that's really nice. It actually has detents cut into it to where it'll lock. And then when you install your brake, what you would need to do is get like a crush washer or something, and then you could, <clears throat> I guess, you could time it to where it's in the right position. So that's an option for you if you wanted to go with a brake like this. Not that you know you'd have to or anything, but just an option for the guys with 14 by one left hand threads. Another thing I noticed um, 
this magazine came with this rifle, obviously. It's just a, a five round Bulgarian mag. Or it might even be, I don't know, Russian or US made. I'm not sure, honestly. Oh, it's a US made Arsenal mag, okay. Uh, this mag comes with it. It's a five round mag. This is a mag I had bought from KVAR a long time ago. It a it's a uh, Bulgarian ten round mag, the same style as like the circle tens here. And one thing I noticed: these magazines, the actual body itself is the same size on both of them. What makes what differentiates five rounds to ten rounds is actually. Part of it is with the base of the follower, you have this right here, is a different size than that. And then the follower itself on the 10 round one is smaller than on the 5 round one. And these are actually just made out of plastic, so a Dremel, you know, you could cut that down fairly easy. And another thing I believe you'd have to do is take a few sections out of the spring to make it that size. But you could do a, a really simple conversion and let your five round factory mag accept ten rounds, which is just you know easier for bench shooting and stuff like that, or shooting from a rest where you want or prone position where you want a smaller mag, but then you don't have to reload every five rounds. So that's just something I noticed that something easy to do. I might do a video or show you once I've done the modification to it, but that's about it. I just wanted to show you guys what an actual 74 style break was and how it differed from a lot of the ones you see on the market and uh, go over the magazine application there's my SGL 21 again I've had this gun for about a week now I guess and I love it this thing's amazing it's just put together so nice it's, uh, the only thing I've really done to it is on the uh, hammer I uh, just profiled it and smoothed it just a little bit to smooth the action out and then on the bottom of the bolt carrier I polished it and smoothed it so it, it's really smooth now I mean it was already smooth before but now it's super smooth one thing about this rifle though that I'm, takes a little bit to get used to is this two stage trigger it's uh, got a really crisp break but it's a really heavy trigger pull I guess the good thing about it is for you know like bench shooting or accurate shooting you, it's a definite break at the same spot every time you know exactly where it's going to break so uh, you know that's a good thing where the G2 trigger they are more finicky like you know they're really really light and I like the G2 triggers but it's kind of indefinite the breaking point every time on it, it seems a little different so this is a, a nice trigger. I'm just still getting used to it, I guess. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it in it or put the G2 in. So, I guess if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them. Thanks, guys. <laughs>